AQA Chemistry 3 Complete Revision Notes. Feel free to pause the video and make notes. I would advise that you download this video as an MP3 file and listen to it whenever you can. Make sure you understand what is being said. This is the most important thing. Over the 19th century, there were many attempts to find a pattern in the properties of elements. John Newlands arranged the elements by atomic mass in his law of octaves, but the pattern broke down after calcium. Dimitri Mendeleev allowed gaps for undiscovered elements in his periodic table and made predictions as to their properties, so the pattern held. When Mendeleev's predictions were found to be correct, his ideas received great support. The modern periodic table arranges the elements by proton number, not atomic mass. The periodic table contains the elements arranged in order of their proton number. The periodic table reflects the arrangement of the electronic structure of the atoms. Elements in the same group have similar properties. Elements in the same period have outer electrons in the same energy level. The periodic table is a powerful tool for predicting how elements react. Metals are on the left hand side of the periodic table and non-metals on the right with intermediate properties on the boundary. Group 1 contains soft but very reactive metals called the alkali metals. Group 1 metals react with water to give strongly alkaline solutions, form single positive ions, form colorless salts that dissolve in water and get more reactive down the group. The larger atoms lose their lone outer electron more easily and so are more reactive than the smaller ones. The transition metals are much less reactive, are stronger and harder and have higher densities than the elements in group 1. Many transition metals and their compounds make excellent catalysts. Transition metal compounds are often colored. As the atomic number increases along a row of transition elements, an inner energy level is being filled with electrons. Group 7 contains the highly reactive non-metals called the halogens. The halogens form diatomic colored gases. Going down the group, the melting and boiling points get higher. At room temperature, fluorine and chlorine are gases. Bromine is a liquid and iodine is a solid. Going down the group, the halogens become less reactive. The larger the atom, the less easy for it to capture an electron and form a negative ion, hence the trend in reactivity. More reactive halogens can displace less reactive halogens from their compounds. In some areas, water dissolves calcium and magnesium ions from the rocks. Water containing calcium or magnesium ions is called hard water. Hard water makes scum with soap, soft water lathers easily. Temporary hard water contains calcium or magnesium hydrogen carbonate. Temporary hardness can be removed by boiling. Permanent hard water contains calcium or magnesium sulfate, which cannot be removed by boiling. Sodium carbonate softens water by removing calcium and magnesium as the insoluble carbonates. Iron exchange columns soften water by swapping sodium ions for the calcium and magnesium ions. Water is safe to drink only if the levels of dissolved salts, other toxic substances and microorganisms are kept below certain limits. Water intended for drinking must be drawn from appropriate sources passed through filter beds and then sterilized. Water quality can be improved by filtering it through activated carbon, silver or an iron exchange resin. Sea water cannot be drunk safely as the salt level is far too high. Only 3% of the water on earth is fresh water. Distillation is a way of purifying water. 
flash distillation is expensive, uses up oil reserves and produces concentrated brine as a waste product which can be difficult to dispose of safely. Hard water has several health benefits over soft water. Fluoride is sometimes added to drinking water to strengthen teeth, but some people question whether this is a good idea. Calorimetry is used to measure the heat energy released or absorbed during chemical reactions. During chemical reactions, energy must be supplied to break bonds, and the energy is released when bonds are formed. Energy level diagrams show these changes in energy as the reaction proceeds. Catalysts speed up reactions by providing alternative pathways with lower activation energy. The overall energy change in a reaction is calculated by subtracting the total bond energies of the products from the total bond energies of the reactants. The difference between the energy absorbed and the energy released determines whether a reaction is exothermic or endothermic. Hydrogen can be burned as a fuel or used in hydrogen powered fuel cells. Hydrogen has a low energy density and must be compressed for transport. It, it can explode if not handled correctly. However, it is a very clean fuel, emitting only water vapor when it is burnt. Flame tests can be used to distinguish the group 1 metal ions. The color of flame for lithium when burnt is crimson, for sodium is orange, for potassium is lilac, for calcium is red, and for barium is green. Sodium hydroxide solution can be used to identify copper, iron and aluminium ions. The color of precipitate for copper 2 is blue, for iron 2 is green and iron 3 is brown. Carbonate ions are detected using dilute acid. Sulfate ions are detected using barium chloride solution in the presence of dilute hydrochloric acid. Halide ions are detected using silver nitrate solution in the presence of dilute nitric acid. The precipitate formed for chloride is silver chloride. The color of the precipitate is white. For bromide, it produces precipitate silver bromide and the color is cream. For iodide, it produces the precipitate silver iodide and the color is yellow. Titration is used to measure the volumes of solutions of acid and alkali that react with each other. Concentration is measured in grams per decimeter cube or mole per decimeter cube. Concentration in grams per decimeter cube equals mass in grams, grams divided by volume in decimeter cubed. Titrations can be used to find amounts of acid or alkali in a solution. Elements and compounds can be detected and identified using a range of chemical tests. Some chemical reactions are reversible. In a closed system, reversible reactions reach a state of equilibrium. Equilibrium is reached when the rate of forward reaction is the same as the rate of the reverse reaction. The position of an equilibrium is affected by changes in conditions. If the temperature is increased, the position of an equilibrium moves in the direction of the endothermic reaction. If the temperature is decreased, the, posi the position of the equilibrium moves in the direction of the exothermic reaction. If the pressure of an equilibrium involving gases in is increased, the position of the equilibrium moves towards the side with less gas molecules. If the pressure of an equilibrium involving gases is decreased, the position of the equilibrium moves towards the side with more gas molecules. Ammonia is made from nitrogen obtained from the air and hydrogen made from natural gas. The reaction is slow and reversible. The optimum conditions used are a temperature of about 450 degrees, a pressure of 200 atmospheres, and an iron catalyst.
The temperature of 450 degrees is a compromise between the rate of reaction and the yield. The pressure of 200 atmospheres is a compromise between the cost and the yield. The reaction mixture is cooled to liquefy the ammonia which is removed and the unreactive hydrogen and nitrogen are recycled. Many industrial processes are equilibria and the conditions are used are a compromise between yield, reaction rate, energy requirements and environmental impact. Alcohols are a homologous series of organic compounds containing the functional group OH. Methanol, ethanol and propanol are the first three alcohols in the series. Alcohols dissolve in water to form neutral solutions. Ethanol is the alcohol in alcohol drinks. Alcohols are used as solvents. Alcohols react with sodium to form hydrogen. Alcohols burn well and are used as fuels. Alcohols are oxidized by air to form carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids are a homologous series of organic compounds containing the functional group COOH. Methanoic acid, ethanoic acid and propanoic acid are the first three carboxylic acids in the series. Ethanol is oxidized to ethanoic acid by microbes in air or mild oxidizing agents. Vinegar is a dilute solution of ethanoic acid in water. Carboxylic acids dissolve in water to form acidic solutions. Carboxylic acids react with carbonates to form carbon dioxide. Esters are organic compounds containing the functional group COO. Esters can be made by the reaction of alcohols with carboxylic acids in the presence of an acid catalyst. Esters are volatile compounds with distinctive smells and are used as flavorings and perfumes. And that's about it. I covered C1, C2 and C3. So I hope all these revision notes help. And good luck with your exams.